What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out a demo that actually really impressed me. I played around with it for about 30 minutes and had a great time. I think the game does a fantastic job with theme and atmosphere. I, I think it's one of those games that kind of sucks you in. It's a very kind of cassette tape analog space survival game that takes place on a falling apart space station where you're desperately trying to survive and put things back together and you've got to run maintenance on boosters and all that kind of stuff to move around. And it's called Untapped. Heathered. So if after watching this video you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. From there you can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you want to hang out live. But this one surprised me. So let's do some first impressions for the next 30 minutes or so and see if it's something that's going to surprise you as well. If not, that's all good. But hey, I'm going to give it my best go. I really hope that 1909 recording of the American Quartet does not get this video claimed. <laughs> oh, deep track right there, though. I respect the reference. Recommended procedures. Structure compromise. Five decimal zero. Rapid depressurization. Notes one, five, six alpha, six bravo. Five decimal one. Emergency evacuation. One decimal zero. There's our new home over there, but unfortunately we've got some serious problems inside this cabin right now, so it may be time for us to go. Let's move on through here, and the game has very simple interactions. Uh, you left click in order to interact with things. You do have like this analog inventory you can play around with, which I'm very much in love with. I always love the really heavy clunky button type thing. Like, I love it when games go analog like that, where they give you all the things that clunk and bang in your inventory and play around with it. We'll grab that right there. If at any time you're playing this game and you want to stop your character, it took me an embarrassing amount of time to realize I could hold down control in order to like give myself inertial dampening. But we need to get off this ship right now because the whole thing about to explode. So let's let's get moving shall we? All right, so we got to disassemble some stuff over here That's gonna be our core gameplay mechanic is once we get over to that other pod. Can I have that? Yeah, let me have that water bag water seems really important for people that are trying to survive in space Open this door on up and the game is in six degrees of freedom. You can just go like that if you want to You can get the full descent experience. Uh, we need to get to the airlock controls right here and we've got to activate this bad boy. So we'll start our EVA. It's going to put a helmet on our head, and then we're going to head on out into the greater universe and hopefully uh, be able to not die explosively. Where's my door at? There's my door. I knew I would find it eventually. Oh, my God. All right. Well, we're out the front door right now, which is always a good sign. Uh, we need to get to the USA pod real fast. I don't know if it broke off from this pod or if it was just kind of here, or if we were doing like a refueling thing or what, but that's gonna be our new home for the foreseeable future. We got a little bit of aluminum over here. You can pick up all this scrap and garbage as it floats around in order to give yourself a better chance at survival. We're gonna need a little bit of copper too. So that'll be good, but we also wanna pay special attention to our oxygen meter over on the left side of our HUD. Uh, let's make for the door on the USA pod and see if we can get inside of there. Enjoy the view, the pleasant music. Honestly, I think the thing that this game does the best is just its atmospheric cultivation. Like, this game has a really good soundscape, and it's got a really good soundtrack that really truly ramps up the feeling of being isolated and alone. You can only, like, place yourself in the footprints of this astronaut right here, where this would quite possibly be the most lonely a single human being could ever be, caught up in a strange cataclysm you know, that you're trying to fix and survive on side of a space station and no one can come and help you. And outside the window is just an uncaring universe, you know, and you're just desperately trying to survive. First thing we need to do over here is we are going to need to reset the breaker box to get the power back on inside. I think that'll actually turn the power off as well. Like you can kill that right there if you get tired of hearing all the flight warnings and whatnot. But we've also got an email terminal over on this side that I think we're going to need to take a look at. So the vehicle has been undocked from the structure and standing by for recovery. 
Distress beacons are active. I will assume command and inside of our comms. We've got our first message from CARE, which is, I guess, the company that we work for, where they are instructing us that we're going to need to build a workbench if we want to survive long term in the face of what we're going up against. So we'll download that schematic very quickly. Uh, we can also check for other bodies, I think, or something that are around, or maybe this is our piloting menu that allows us to fly the craft. We can also check the status of the craft right now, the tug that we're on, and it looks like we have an aft hull breach that we're gonna have to figure out before too long and it looks like also the engine bell has taken some damage out here other readouts are saying I don't know how to read this right here I don't know RCS is the um, RCS is the thrust right there but I don't know what LO2 and LH2 are so unfortunately I can't really read out anything that we've got to fix but it looks like ATCS is online, coolant is looking pretty good, batteries, main and auxiliary buses are all online. So really we just need to patch up that hole over there and get it done. You can't interact with this over here. I tried already. You can't interact with it. But this little bay right here is where we're going to want to go in. You can't stop yourself from thrusting when drifting sideways. All right, we need to go to our construction panel and I already grabbed the stuff that we need in order to build ourselves a workbench on this side. Now that we have a workbench, we have disassembly options, so things that are inside your inventory, you can have them broken down over here. You can also craft other things, so we can make ourselves water bags. We can make electrical kits for fixing things on the outside of the space station. Really, this game is kind of what I was hoping. There was another game that came out a while ago that I really adored, but it was super short and had like no content. It was called Tin Can, and I just absolutely loved Tin Can while it lasted. This game is kind of what I wish Tin Can had become if they had kept working on it. Just a game about trying to stop the forces of entropy from depriving you of your oxygen. Uh, let's go. Kara's emailed us one more time, and they want us to construct a small module, and they want us to put a science hub inside of it. You'd think they would know that I've got other things going on right now, and I'm a little bit busy. We need an electrical kit to get that done. I think I can get that done no problem. There does seem to be a frequent problem that I'm having on my 4090 right now. Uh, last time I fiddled around with the demo, there's frame chuggies. You'll notice it. I checked to see if there was a frame lock or something like that, and I don't know exactly what causes it. But every now and again, the frame rate does like to hitch out on me. It may have to do with a misalignment of the refresh rate. I've gone ahead and I've turned on V-Sync, which I guess I didn't think about before. But V-Sync is now on and it's syncing up the refresh rate. And we'll see if we get any chuggies or anything else like that. But by and large, I did get some pretty serious frame chuggies while I was playing. Might just be unoptimized. I mean, it's a demo of a game that's not even out. Uh, so for construction here, I need to make a science hub. But they want me to build a new module, too. So let's do a module. You must be outside to build this. All right, let's go outside, and we'll play around with it. I didn't actually do a lot of the objectives. I mostly just floated around space and had a good time being a spaceman. But uh, we'll start our EVA here. That's going to depressurize. Door's going to come open. Hopefully, we don't lose any fingers and toes. And from the outside of this module, let's go ahead and see if we can build the thing. So we've got a small module right here, and we've got a target, a hatch, in order to make it happen. Okay, that looks like a hatch to me. And it looks like we got it all pieced in right there. I do kind of wish that you had to build it manually. Like, I wish that was a thing you had to do where it left, like, a wireframe right there, and then you had to break out tools, and you had to, like, weld and solder and run the wiring and everything else. When it comes to games like this, I'm a big, I'm a big immersive sim junkie. I want to do everything. I want to connect the wires inside the panels. I want to, I want to be over here with a riveting gun, just, you know, like, I want to get it done. The game has such good sound design, too, that it's just intoxicating to, like, participate in this game's universe. I've really been liking it. All right, oxygen's filled back up. I'm going to gather up a few more things while I'm out here. There's a cardboard box. Let's grab that. Three cans of tuna. I guess that'll keep us fed for about five minutes. A little bit more copper. We're at 44 kilograms that we're carrying right now, and our thrust can only manage 100, so keep that in mind. There will be upgrades that we grab later on that make our thrust quite a bit more frequent. Or I'm sorry, quite a bit more efficient. But for now, we're stuck with what we're stuck with. All right, we got a lot of aluminum. Let's head back on inside. And I did need to take a look. Yeah, it looks like there's a big crack in the thruster down there. What's that going to take to fix? 
Engine bell repair inoperable until conducted. No mobile repair unit. Install the necessary EVA suit equipment inside your homepage. All right, I'll do that. Where's the door? I'm going to need to be inside the door very, very shortly. Let's get up inside of here. Honestly, this game kind of gives me Subnautica vibes, too. That's like the feel that I get from it, is that it's a survival game that has like a, it has a prevailing narrative and a setting that makes it really stand out. And I think there's been five or six games that have targeted this idea, but none of them have done it like particularly well. This is the first one that like I'm like, okay, this is the one. This is the game that's making the thing that I wanted to be made. Uh, is our module good and accessible? Looks like it is. It's a little bit like bounce housey and blue in here. But I guess we'll make it work. We gotta get ourselves a science hub built, which requires an electrical kit. Luckily I grabbed the copper that I needed. So let's see if we can get that done. Electrical kit. Okay. Electrical kit good to go. And let's get our little science hub placed inside of here. The floating, like, Newtonian inertia and whatnot, the Newtonian, like, physics of the game feel really nice, too. Why do I have a heartbeat right now? Is something wrong with me? Hunger and thirst. Gotcha. All right, water bag. I drink you. Did that fill me up? It did not. So let's go ahead and fill up all the way. And then we've got some tuna over here. We'll go ahead and get the tuna banged out. Did that get me... How much hunger does the tuna can give me? Because there's not a lot of calories in a tuna can, all right? It got us there. We're okay. Our inventory mass is a little bit high, so we're going to need to figure out a way to store all this stuff. But Science Hub, let's power it on. So DC amps, looking okay. No laboratories on board the station. See the tree tab. Okay, so we've got telemetry over here. That's pretty much all that we can take for the moment, so let's unlock telemetry. That's going to take us on over to basic storage, but we're going to have to generate more science data. We need science credits before we're going to be able to get out of here, and so I think we've kind of hit like a... I think we've kind of hit a stopgap there. Let's have a look and see what we got going on. I'm guessing we're going to get a phone call now from CARE. Looks like we got like one minute until nighttime gets here, too. It's going to get dark and spooky around here. Didn't get any emails. If I can get silicon, I can make a circuit board over here. I can also make my own empty water bags, but I don't even think I have the thing that generates water just yet. And there's our telemetry processor, so we're probably going to want to slam that in across from the science hub because this is going to... Oh, that's not good. What just happened? The breaker flip? Oh, we have no solar power. We're on emergency. All right, we'll reset the breaker and we'll stay on. There we go. Uh, it says there's a sleeping quarters available in the overhead cabin. And there's our sleeping quarters right there. We've got a pod. Let's sleep away. I don't know if I could sleep in this environment. This seems markedly stressful and concerning. Like This is one of those life or death situations where I feel like sleep wouldn't be able to find you. But for now, I'm going to get my orientation back. There we go. All right, so we got 15 minutes till nighttime gets here. Let's kick on the power grid. Breaker's looking okay, so we should be all right there. And we need to go find silicon. I don't know how easy that's going to be to find, but let's go ahead and give it a look, shall we? There's got to be something around here that's made out of glass. Oh, almost took my head off, dude. I swear to God, that bulkhead is the most murderous bulkhead of all the bulkheads, dude. It keeps trying to get me. Really, I'm looking for anything that looks like a window panel or something, maybe? Yeah, that'll do it right there. Glass panels, I see them. Ah, I seen them. We're a little bit far away from where I would like to be. Like, this is pretty far out to grab this stuff, but I'm just going to do it because we got to get that telemetry data online, and until we get the telemetry data online, we are going to have problems. I also have no water bags left, so I need to grab some of these water bags that are floating around here. Anything that could be helpful. What are you? Canned tuna. Yep. Dinner sounds nice. I'll grab a few of those. I guess we're just going to be completely and totally surviving on fish food for right now. You think like there was like a tuna swimming in the ocean? Did you think that tuna could have ever guessed 
that someday his flesh would be sustaining an astronaut like a million billion miles out in space? Crazy, right? Okay, so telemetry console. We'll get the circuit board done, and the circuit board has now been banged out. I think we can probably only put two of these inside this module. Oh no, we can put in more. Okay, put this guy in right here then. How do I interact with him? All right, we're now exporting scientific data so that we can get research credits. Uh, we are gonna have to figure out, unfortunately, we're gonna have to figure out uh, how to generate more power. I'm guessing we're gonna have to recover some panels and put them on the outside would be my guess. But for now, can I store anything inside those bags? I kind of like went through everything in here, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's still little interactions that I missed out on. Uh, we've got that transmitting data, so that's good. And it looks like they're going for like storage right now. Yeah, let's let that roll over. And we'll grab access to basic storage so that I can build up storage chests and stuff. Yeah, there's a storage rack right there. That'll work out pretty well. I definitely received. need to... I know we've got communications received, dude. Even in space, they're trying to get me to check on that car warranty, man. What do you want? What? Care follow-up. This is an automated message. With this new lab, you can earn credits to advance through our catalog of cutting-edge technology. You may build additional labs to accelerate your credit earning. I mean, okay, cool, man. Sounds good. Uh, let's bail on out of here. And now that we've got, what's it going to cost me to put down a couple of storage racks? Electrical kits, first and foremost. All right, so electrical kit over here. We'll just grab that. I'm not going to try to go too crazy with my storage solutions. I'm just going to let inertia do its thing over here. All right, storage rack. And it looks like inside the storage rack, is this going to pull? I have questions about whether or not this is going to pull. Oh, I like how the little meters, they change based on the volume here. So this is going down, the measurement of my suit while this is going up. Love that detail. Fantastic. Empty water bags inside of there. We'll get the silicon in there, which is apparently very heavy. Uh, the tuna cans and the water bags don't really weigh that much. So... I'm not going to worry about it. I think we're all right. Now, with the telemetry processor up and running, how many bytes of data has it transmitted? we got four credits over here. Is that enough for us to get anything? We need eight, and then we've got field analysis. Solar energy is going to cost us five. Suit upgrades is going to cost us seven. All right, I'm going to go gather materials while I wait, but I also wanted to check and see if this will craft out of connected storage. It will not. That's really, really unfortunate. I, I wish that it did. I don't, I don't really like doing inventory management. I always like it when you make a chest and everything just pulls out of it. So that would be one observation I would have. But then again, I guess they're going for realism with this title. So they can probably get away with the realism argument since this is trying to be sort of a, a analog realism survival game in space, I guess. I'll just grab a few more things while we wait for that data to transmit. Just noticed another thing interesting. While you're flying around with a full inventory, the game is actively taking into account as you're flying, the wieldiness of your suit seems to be linked to how heavy you are. Like how much stuff you're carrying around with you. Like your thrusters don't work as well. It feels like it's harder to like break and get yourself. I, I, I can't say for sure that's what's happening, but I was moving pretty fast outside and my brakes were not slowing me down one tiny bit. And just like that, this rack is full. So I think we're going to need to make some more racks, too. Just to get ourselves a tad more comfortable. Alright, let's get in here. And we will get two electrical kits. Now that I have two electrical kits knocked out, we should be able... I don't know how much power these are drawing. That sort of concerns me a little bit. But we'll rack this area up a little bit. And then I'll make another area for all telemetry broadcasters so that we get our research faster. But for now, I just need to have lots of storage space. I feel passionately about it. All right, so where are we at with research? We've got enough to get suit upgrades. So let's grab those quickly. Solar energy we also have enough for. And it looks like we've only got that over there. I'm wondering if I'm going to kill the power at some point. 
there's got to be like little malfunctions and things that they're planning where you've got to turn off like systems that are daisy chained and whatnot in order to fix you know grounding issues and things of that nature i don't know how like realistic they're going to try to get with this but so far i'm liking it i'm liking it a lot so i've got a leaky tank right now which means i can replace it with a small tank it looks like I also have solar cells available, which will allow me to make more power grid. But I need to get a handle on where the power grid is at anyways. So our capacity is a little over 2 amps. And right now we're drawing at 1.5. So yeah, we're going to need to get the solar panels up and running before too long. I, I don't think that's going to be an optional objective. That's just going to have to happen if we want to continue to expand. For a solar array, we just need aluminum, and we need a solar cell. So I think I can put this together. I've got a whole bunch of... Oh yeah, dude, I was going to try to make the tank too, huh? Having a leaky air tank is probably a big liability. We probably want that to work first. Uh, we need three aluminum, and we need two silicon. Alright. Pull the aluminum out of storage. pull the silicon out of storage maybe bring two more so that I can make the solar cell while we're over here and we'll get our small tank right there which hopefully will give us a little more time to play around with I need to go back to my inventory and I think we can go with a small tank right there and that's going to bust us up by about 70 seconds so we get another minute outside the pod and it also increases our inventory weight, so that'll be good to have. I haven't gotten any thrusters just yet, but someday. Someday we'll get our thrusters. Uh, with the solar cell on me, how much did I need for solar arrays? We've already got that covered. But if we can go on out and we can get a little bit more silica, or at least recover a couple panels from the wreckage, I think we'll be in much better shape. Please don't take my head off, dude. This door, every time it opens, is like Darth Vader. It terrifies me. Nothing good is going to happen on account of that door swinging wide like that. I'll probably try to grab some water while I'm out here, too. I only have, like, one bag of water inside the ship. And so grabbing a couple waters while we're out here would probably be helpful. Let's see what we got with our debris and detritus. I see a chunk of solar panel over here. See another one right there. Another one right there. I don't know how heavy the silicon is. I also don't know how many of these panels I'm going to be able to put out. I think I'm a little low on copper too. But I don't want to go crazy with the gathering. Because we have such limited storage space right now. Can we get a paint gun so that I can give my ship a sick paint job? I want to put like a World War II lady on the side of it like I'm a bomber. That's what I want to do. I want my ship to represent the things that I find the most exciting. Alright, so I manufactured more solar cells. So if we can get out on the outside of the ship, and we can figure out where we want to put these things at. I don't know if it's got like limited slots for that sort of interaction. But, solar arrays. We've almost tapped out our power grid, so... Yeah, I think we could do that right there. We could put another one. Let's do like a, a row of them. I feel like that'll look a little better. There we go. Give me a row right there. Give me another row right there. And then we'll try to get it on the opposite side too. I don't know how much power capacity these things are going to be providing to us. Man, that is a big, hostile, terrifying looking planet, ain't it? Like, logically, I know that it's just like a giant rock mass floating in space, but there's something eerie about it. There's something eerie and unpleasant about the planet just staring at me like that. So let's see what we got going on right now. With our overall power grid, having added three of those new solar panels. Let's see here. How we looking? So our power capacity, it looks like we get roughly 
one tower, like one amp per. I mean, it bought us a little bit more time. That That's all you can really ask for is to get that done right there. Uh, do we have any emails or anything coming on in? No emails coming on in, and it's almost the end of the day. I definitely want to go out. We've got one minute. I'm going to go out, and I'm going to check. I may not show this to you guys, but we already checked the booster. I'm going to go check for the other, the hull breach that we have, dude. I don't think we should leave that hull breach unattended for, like, days straight. It just seems like a really, really bad mistake. Oh, yeah, there she is right there. Oof, that's an ugly one. We're going to have to break out the Gorilla Glue on that bad boy. Okay, uh, we need to have a mobile repair unit. Just like with the booster. At least our little RCSs look like they're working okay. Nighttime is upon us, so that means there's not really much else to do but go to sleep. So we'll kill the main power and we'll run off augs for a little bit. Get a little nap time in us and kind of see how we're feeling. I like how stark this was. They had to be an intentional choice artistically. I love how stark and how sharp the LCD number is that's telling you what day it is every time you go to sleep. Compared to kind of like the film grain thing that the rest of the game has going on. I don't know. It makes it stand out. It makes it feel almost like a threat, I guess. That's flashing in your face. So we've been alive for three days. I mean, that's not terrible. We got anything broadcasting coming in? I need the uh, the suit upgrades. We have 12 credits for right now. We got basic storage, solar energy, power storage. We can get batteries. Medium construction will give us access to a junction module, a medium module, and an observatory. We've got fluid analysis over here that we can play around with that allow us to figure out, I guess, the way fluids behave. And then we've got mobile repairs over here, but I'm going to need more credits for that. So it may be time for us to slap in. It looks like we're getting limited use out of our broadcasting uh, bandwidth right now. So it may be time if I have space. Do I still have a rack in here? I do still have a rack in here. So let's make another telemetry processor. And I need a circuit board for that. All right. I think I have all the things inside my inventory right now. So we should just be able to make this happen. Uh, give me the circuit board. Good stuff. And then we'll just kind of delicately float over here without bonking my noggin. And there's another telemetry processor. Let's kick her online. So this thing takes exactly one amp. All right. So we should have ten now going up. Yeah, nice and even Stevens right there. Good stuff. Okay, so let's roll back over here. And let's keep a rough eye on where our power grid is at. Our draw isn't too bad. It's a little over two right now, and we're sitting on like five capacity. And so if I give this three more solar panels and then we start outfitting the outside of the craft with like battery banks as well, I think we won't have to worry about this anymore. And then we'll be able to get the upgrades so that we can get the mobile repair tools for our suit. And then once we've got the mobile repair tools for our suit and we add those on in there, we should be able to fix the booster, and then we can fix that crack that's in the hole right now, leaking all of our good stuff out. But for the time being, I think we've played the game enough. This is my first impressions video of a game called Untethered. I'm in love with it. I like it a lot, you know? I've been in, like, the real doldrums with indie games lately, and I'm so glad when little things like this show up, and, like, I played around with Blight earlier this week, which I really adored, and so I'm, I'm glad that we're off to a strong start this week with things that make me happy and are things that I would actually play a whole bunch. Uh, I will see you all later. Thank you for hanging out. My name is Splattercat. I sit through the pile to find what is worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today, we were checking out a game called Untethered. Tomorrow, we'll be doing something else. Thanks for sharing your time with me, and I will see you all later.